Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today I will talk about the QA part in the development process. So if you work in a software development company, you probably have someone that is qualified as a QA. It can be a guy, it can be a girl, it doesn't really matter. Most probably you have someone that does this job. I used to work in a place where we had a QA, but now we don't have one and along the years I've talked a lot about this topic with many people and today I'm gonna talk about it with you guys. Now, before we begin, I want to make sure that all of you guys know that I'm not disrespecting this job, I'm not saying it's completely unnecessary, so don't, please don't take it personally. Also, if you disagree with me or even agree with me, feel free to leave a comment. So from my experience, the development process in a place with a QA goes something like this. Something needs to be done. The development team implements it. The feature goes to QA. The QA verifies it. Sometimes the QA also checks if nothing else is broken. In case something is wrong, a bug is open. The development team fixes it. It goes back to QA and checks it. The bug is checked and closed. The feature is approved. Now sometimes the QA sits inside the team, but sometimes there is actually another QA team that does the checks for the features. It doesn't matter, the process, the development process, in both cases goes like I described a few seconds ago. So now after we've seen how this process works, let's talk about what's wrong with it. First of all, the developers feel less responsible for their job. They feel that there is someone out there that will catch their errors. So they start checking less things, less edge cases. They start to forget to check how this feature affects other features and stop thinking about it at all. Because there is somewhere a QA guy or girl, doesn't matter, that will catch this error. Also, when the bug is found, the developer thinks that the QA found the bug. The developer doesn't think that that he made the bug. He thinks that the QA guy is the one to blame for the bug. Even if he doesn't say it, this thought sometimes comes to the developer's mind. That the QA guy is the one to blame for this bug and not himself. The second thing is the human error factor. No one is perfect, neither the QA. So when running checks over and over again, and if you're a QA or if you know a QA person, that you pro then you probably know that this is kind of job that sometimes needs to be done, running things over and over and over again. So when you're doing it, it is very, very hard to get thoroughly over all of the checks each time. After a while, you're checking less and less things. And this might cause errors to go through the checking process. Also, people get bored doing the same thing over and over again. And this boredom also affects the checking quality. People are not very good at connecting to not relevant things that might get affected by one another. Because we tend to look locally at the things that are getting done. For example, if a bug is fixed, that is fixing this area of the system, probably we as humans will miss out that this area affects another area in other part of the system. And we will not check it. Neither the programmer will check it, nor the QA. So this will get missed out. Number three, the feedback loop is very long. As developers, we like to get the feedback about what we've done very quickly. This reduces the chance that we will forget what we've done and will reduce the contact switches that will happen if we go to another feature, developing another feature or fixing another bug. When there is a QA in the process, the feedback loop is as fast as the work of the QA, which is slower than the computer. The first thing is that the release process gets much longer because there is another human being besides the developer in the, develop in the release process and we as human beings tend to get sick, tend to take vacations from time to time and sometimes we simply have a bad day. So all of this affects the 
quality and the time it takes for the QA to finish the checks of the feature. And when the checks are not completed, the feature will not go out to the market. So this makes the release process much longer. The fifth thing that is wrong with this process is that when there is a QA in this process, sometimes the developers feel less need for automation. And I'll give you an example. If a bug is found, developers tend to quickly fix this bug and send it to the QA to check it. The QA will approve it and the bug will be fixed and closed and go to the production. But after a while, after a month or two, or even a year or two, trust me, everyone will forget about this bug. This bug will never be checked again. So when there is another bug fixed in other place or another feature is developed, developers might do something that will make this bug to reappear and trust me, no one will see it, neither the developers nor the QA team and this bug will reappear in the production. So by doing this, by not running automation tests on this bug, which will happen if you have a QA, trust me, it will happen from time to time, it will make bugs to pop out again and again and trust me, it will be very frustrating. And the final thing that I want to talk to you about is that it is very, very hard for the QA to really know what to check. The QA will never know the system as good as the developers. The QA might know how the feature should react, how the feature should feel and what the feature is, but it is very, very hard for the QA to know how this feature will affect another feature because they're touching the same code, the same code base, they're relying on the same thing and how this bug fix might break something else in another part of the system. Because of this, usually the team must explain very thoroughly to the QA what exactly to check and what parts of system might be affected by this feature. It takes time because humans and after a while a team will tend to spend less and less time into explaining it because the team will assume that after a while the QA will will know the effects automatically but it is not the case okay when there is another feature developed most probably the QA will not understand how this new feature is connected inside the program inside the code with another features but again the QA without seeing the code which he will probably never do it is very very hard for him to know how this change the system affects other things in the system and what actually affects this part of the system, this new feature, what it is affected by without seeing the code. Now after we've seen the problems with this process, let's see how we can improve it. We can remove the QA from the release process as much as we can and replace him with automated tests. Instead of investing time to train the QA, this time will be invested into developing automated tests. Automated tests will reduce the human error factor from this release process and will always run and check everything that ever been written and told to be checked. Also, the automated tests can run anytime, even at night. There will no longer be need to get approval from the QA to release this feature. This will make the developers feel much more responsible for the code they are writing. The automated tests will make sure that this feature, this new feature or this new bug fix, how it will affect another area of the code and if it breaks it, the automated tests will find it, even if the developer didn't think about it. The developers know the guts of the system, they know how the code works, so when the tests will be written by developers, the tests will check much thoroughly, more deeply things of the system and not just the, the first layer of the system, the user interface layer. The automated tests will check the guts of the system. If a bug is found and a test is written for it, this bug will never appear again. The tests will make sure of it. Now be aware that with the QA or without the QA in the release process, there is still a human being, the developer, inside this process. 
So bugs from time to time will go to production and it is okay, okay? You will never be able to develop a system without bugs. But because there are now less humans in the release process, it is now less probable for human error to appear in this process. So by now, what you're probably thinking is, hey, we don't need a QA at all. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm actually saying is that the things that the QA do now in the companies should not be done by the QA. They should concentrate and do things that is very, very hard to automate or even do at all by machines. Things like check how the system feels when using it, whether it is hard to understand what to do or very simple to understand what to do, or doing some non-logical things with the new feature or with the system that it is not specified in the feature requirements, but the user, the end user, might actually do with this new feature. Doing more of a wide search of bugs of all the system, not concentrating on this new feature, but working with the new system and looking for bugs that are spread by using multiple features of the system. These things can be done all the time, regardless of new features, even on production system. So now it's actually up to you guys. You can think about the things that I told you today and think what applies to your place of work and what can you do and what should you do to make it better. You have watched an episode about the QA part in the development process. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more videos like this by clicking over here, or if you trust YouTube to know what you really want to see, click over here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programmarks.